In today's video, I am going to be comparing Luka Doncic and James Harden and their basketball shooting form against each other. They are both very good shooters and they both use the step back, so I feel like this is a fair comparison. Let's get down and let's check out these amazing players. Okay, so something really quickly about right-handed or even left-handed players is a really small secret. And that is, is if you're looking to do a step back, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're right-handed, you better learn how to do a step back towards that left side. The reason for this is because your right side is going to be in line with the basketball net a lot easier and faster if you're moving towards that left side. And because of that, you're going to be able to get off a lot of shots at a high percentage. And we can see this here when he takes that step back we can see that he's tilted just like every other shot we can see that he's up onto his heels which is going to be engaging those calves and because of that he's going to be able to get up into the air very quickly now what he does is he does lift that ball up the middle of his body and when he gets up into his set point, we can see that his shoulder and elbow are in line with the rim. And we can see that at least half of that ball is over top of that upper arm. This essentially creates what I call that shooting triangle, which essentially will allow you to have a nice straight shot. From there, we can also see, and I really want to point this out, is that his hand is super wide on the basketball. This is going to give you a lot of control over the ball. And we can see that he does have a slight thumb flick, but it's not affecting his shot at all. When he goes to release that ball, we can see that it does go off his middle finger last, and that when he extends, his elbow is above his forehead, which will give him the arc needed to be able to allow him to have that soft shot. We can see this once again here where he's dribbling towards his left side, takes that step back, and again, he is super tilted away from the rim, but he has his elbow and shoulder in line with the rim. Now, something else that does help out Luka Doncic here is he does have a higher set point than some. Some players will shoot beside their head, while players like Trey Young will shoot in front of their face. If that was the case, Walker here would have been able to block his shot super easily, but because he has that high set point and high release he's able to get that shot up over top of the defender he has that nice soft release he doesn't have that rigid wrist that Michael Jordan had he has a soft release like Curry which allows him to get more arc on that ball and because of that he's able to score at pretty much ease with the step back he also does like to use that behind the back or behind the leg snatch back to be able to then go towards that left side so that he can again have his right side in line. So even though he is driving right here, he does a quick snatch back which allows him to go back towards that left side. Of course that does create a lot of space between himself and his defender. However, from here he's able to get that right side in line quicker because he's traveling towards that left side. Well, I shouldn't say traveling, he didn't travel, but he stepped back towards that left side side and of course he makes that shot too and how he was able to get this is because he used the rocker step where he takes that jab uses his shoulders to make it look like he's going to go back towards the left side which puts the heels down on the ground of the defender and then because of that he's able to then attack that right side he does slightly push the defender if you can get away with that and the refs don't call it go for it but if the refs call it don't go for it and from there he does that quick snatch back which allows him to go back towards again that left side gets his right side of his body in line for that shot he does get a lot of art or arc on this shot because of his high release and his soft release but also he really curls his hand a lot which allows him to get lots of backwards rotation and the more backwards rotation you have the better because if it hits that rim let's say you went too far of a shot and it hits that rim instead of it bouncing out with that backspin it slowly slows that ball down so you're more liable to be able to get it into the rim. Now here with James Harden, he's a left-handed player, however we can see him here. He does size up his defenders a lot and the reason why he sizes them up is it gets their heels down to the ground. However again, when he goes for a shot, look at what side he's going to. We can see this a lot, again, sizes up when he gets that switch and then he does that quick step back again towards that right side because he's a left-handed player he's able
able to get that left side of his body in line to the rim to be able to make that shot. Now, the difference between the two players is, of course, James Harden does use that size up move quite often. And when he uses this size up move, essentially what he's trying to do is he's trying to gauge what this defender is going to do. Because of this size up move where he's dribbling continuously through the legs, if this player continues to play tight, James Harden's going to use that. He's already dribbling low, keeping his shoulders low. He'll drive on that player. However, because this player gives him space, and we can see that here where he starts to LeBron, or I keep on wanting to say LeBron James, but it's James Harden, keeps on doing that size up move. We can see that Duncan Robinson steps back slightly, and then he puts his heel heels to the ground. That then sits his butt back, and because of this, James Harden could, of course, attack the rim. However, he wants to hit a three here. He just does that quick step back, right, left, and because he went back towards that right side, his left side of his body is already in line, and that's a big, massive secret that you need to know if you're a basketball player. Now when he takes these shots, we can see that he again has a very high set point, generally above his forehead. He has that 45 on his elbow, the same as Luka Doncic, and when he releases again, elbow above the forehead, nice soft release, and of course tons of rotation on that ball because when he does that soft release we can see right here it's off his middle finger but when he does this soft release we can really see that even though it's not a hard release where the upper hand is straight we can see that it's a nice curved hand which allows him to have the arc of a soft release but also the backwards rotation of a hard release and we can see on this move here that he's able to, because of his huge tilt away from the rim, he's able to get that ball in line with his shoulder, about a quarter of that ball, that elbow and shoulder are in line with the rim, and he's able to hit that shot as well. The main difference is going to be the offhand. He has zero thumb flick, unlike Luka Doncic has a very, very slight thumb flick, one that doesn't affect the ball at all. However, we don't see a thumb flick at all with James Harden. Again, very high, soft release and he's able to really do well with this the other thing with LeBron, uh, James Harden versus Luka Doncic is with Luka Doncic his feet tend to be a little bit wider we can see that with this clip here where his feet tend to be about shoulder width apart James Harden tends to have him a bit closer sometimes we can also see that Luka Doncic brings his knees together versus James Harden, who just has a very close feet stance altogether anyways, and his knees don't necessarily come together, they're just automatically bending forward because his feet are so close together. I hope that this video helps you become a better shooter in basketball. If it does, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.